Hey, what's up? I'm Andrew Bacon, and this is our teeny tiny master bedroom closet, and I have had enough. And so I'm gonna rip everything out of here, redesign the whole space, and make it this awesome new stylish and efficient closet, and I'd love to show you how I did it on this episode of Field Treasure Designs. And here we go, we took everything out. I cannot believe how much we had managed to stuff in this closet. So thankfully my wife helped me and we got all the clothes out and all the bins out and then I had to grab the shelf, we pulled that out of there and then I grabbed all my stuff, bins, hats, boxes, clothes, you know, all the stuff. And in no time it was empty and ready for demolition. First I took off some hooks that I had put in for hanging things and I took out the bars and really everything went normal. It was just your basic, you know, closet shelf demo. I uh, had to use my knife to cut away the caulk and paint and make sure it wouldn't pull too hard. And so yeah, busted out the shelves, you know, a piece at a time. They went out pretty easy. I found an old Air Force practice photo on the field, which is pretty cool. And then just continued on shelf by shelf. I cut away the joints and used my hammer to pop them out. And yeah, it went pretty easy. Got the first shelf all done and got rid of the material and it was on to the top shelf. I added my earmuffs because the sound of the hammer was so loud in that little closet. Okay, demolition is done. So here's what the closet looks like. Like I said, it's super tiny, but the design is gonna be real efficient and I think it's gonna be great. So yeah, here's what we're working with and it's time to get to work. So first I measured the back wall because I'm gonna line it with shiplap. Then I went to my miter station in my garage. Sorry about the lighting, it got kind of dark, but uh, yeah, I bought just basic MDF uh, shiplap at the hardware store since wood is so expensive these days, and I cut it to length. Here's a cool tip of my saw, by the way. It casts a shadow to help me find my mark really easily. And boom, all done. So now it's time to install it. So I'm gonna use my nail gun to install the boards, and the first board is important because we want it to be level. And so even though there's a gap at the top, that's okay because we're gonna caulk that at the end. So once the first board is in, all it is is a matter of going down and doing each board at a time. And then the left and the right side doesn't matter in terms of their length from the wall because I'm gonna put a piece of trim on each side and so it'll look really nice at the end. I just worked my way down and it's looking great. And so once I got to the bottom, I decided to take the wall all the way down to the floor. So I cut out the bottom piece of trim and then I grabbed a scrap piece of MDF shiplap to use as my test to get that width perfectly. So once I got a measurement, I took it to my table saw, I cut it to size, and then here I'm testing it and it looks like it's a great fit on both the left and the right side. And so now we're good. I'm using my multi-tool to cut away the other trim so that that last piece of shiplap can fit in there and be nice and snug. We're good, so now I'm just gonna nail it in and then I'm gonna put those trim pieces on each side. So they're on the right where I am there, I'm gonna also cut out that trim later on. And here we go, all done. The next thing I wanted to do was install a light that would be wired into a switch. So I'm cutting out the hole for a can light and I shoved it up there. These are super easy to install. And since I have attic access right there, it makes this really easy. So once that was ready, I ran the wires down next to the closet door and here I am installing a light switch. I am so pumped to get rid of that pull chain light and have an actual toggle switch right next to the door. So here I'm just doing your basic switch wiring in and I get it all connected. And then once it's secure, I can put the faceplate on, which is like the most satisfying thing ever. And then my awesome helper, he gets to help me see if it works. All right, turn it on. Woohoo! Looks great, huh? Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. While I was doing the light and electrical work, my awesome wife was painting the ship lap black. Man, it's looking sweet. And there's that new light. Now it's time to cut the boxes, so I'm cutting my 3 quarter inch MDF to start the process for making the boxes for the shelf units. Each side of the closet is going to have a tall shelf system and then a stacking hanger system for all the hanging clothes. The track saw makes cutting these long cuts awesome. So for the shelf units, I want them to be adjustable. So I'm using the Craig pin jig system, which this is my first time using it, and it is incredible. 
So I used a standard block so I knew where to start my holes on each side. And then, yeah, you just go through and use the template to drill out the holes. It has all the hardware you need. And then once you're done, you can take it out and then it has a little pin that you put in and then you mark where you left off. Now it removes one of the holes that you'll drill so you're not as efficient. But yeah, you drill five more holes and then just continue the process. So I started with just using my hand and then I realized that I might wanna use a clamp and so I used one of my bench clamps and so that worked well. And then I realized later, as you'll see here in a minute, that I actually had a Craig clamp that worked even better. And yeah, you just keep going down the end and it works amazing. Here I am on the other side, going all the way along. And as you can see, there's a lot of holes to drill. But yeah, this thing is awesome. I highly recommend it if you're doing any adjustable shelving. The next day I had more to do, as you can see, it's a little colder in my shop. And now I'm using that Craig clamp, which I think is the best clamp with this system. So there we go, done. Next, I cut the top shelf for each unit that'll stretch all the way across both sides of the closet. Here I'm cutting the main box bottom and I'm doing a shelf in the middle that'll be attached permanently. Here's what I've got so far. I've got the sides of my boxes that my wife already painted black with the holes drilled in them. Then I've got the top shelves on each side and then I've got a bottom and then a middle shelf that I will attach permanently. Before I assemble the boxes, I need to cut out the carpet so that they can rest on the subfloor. So I took the bottom base to use as my measurement. Next, I grab my multi-tool to cut away the base trim there so that the box can fit in nice and flush with the wall. Grab my little crowbar, which by the way, that thing is super handy, and cut away a little bit more, and then I just worked my way around. Okay, cool. Now I fit my piece in to make sure it fit good. Okay, it's good. Now I'm gonna use this template to cut away the carpet. Now this tool is super cheap, but it is super important. I cannot believe how great it is at cutting carpet. I'm gonna link to it in the show notes below. I tried hard to like get out of the way of the camera, but yeah, make a couple cuts. And again, be real careful. Do not slice a finger here. And yeah, just work my way around, make sure I'm nice and straight. I don't want to go through that corner. And then finally, I was able to get the carpet out, a nice clean square. And now I've got carpet tacking and the carpet pad. The pad comes out pretty easily. There's staples that hold it down. I used the knife to cut it away. And now I'm ready to clean up the area. I grabbed my pry bar to take away the carpet pad staples that they had put in. And then I also used my pry bar to get rid of the carpet tacking. The multi-tool works great to cut it away. And so here I thought I might save those just in case, but I ended up not needing them. And boom, now we're all ready to go. It's nice and clean and yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Then I just repeated the exact same process on the other side where my wife's side of the closet is gonna be. After I got done, I went and cut down two three-quarter inch pieces of plywood that I'm going to use as the sub layer. And so here I am installing it, and that's going to be where the box rests on. It's going to be exactly flush with the carpet, which is awesome. Sweet. Now let's check on the other pieces. So back in the garage, all my pieces are painted, and we've been testing out the configuration with my boxes and bins, a laundry hamper, things like that. And so we are ready to put these boxes together. So I started with the first box shelf and so here I am laying out the pieces on my work table. First I did a little vacuum sesh just to make sure everything was cleaned up and then it was time to start the assembly. So I wanted to get it all together then move it into the closet. So I laid it out, we decided to measure where I wanted that middle shelf to go and then I started by attaching the bottom first. Once I got the bottom attached I then rolled it on its side to carefully install the middle shelf. This side was a little tricky as I needed to make sure it was nice and lined up. But yeah, it worked out great. Before fully attaching the middle shelf, I wanted to roll it again. And then at the top, I'm using one little piece of MDF to hold it together at the top. It's also going to have the top shelf holding it secure. And it's going to be mounted against the wall into the studs through the drywall. And so I don't need that much. But for now, I want to make sure it's nice and secure. So with every attaching point, by the way, and every fastener, I did a pilot hole. And then I did a little bit of a recessed uh, hole. And then I drilled in the screw. And I use drywall screws since those are coarser and they bite a little bit better into the MDF. 
Then I got my middle shelf nice and secure after it was laying on top of itself, as you see here. Then came the dilemma of the other side. So I did a quick flip and whew, it worked out great. Luckily, the parts were nice and secure and nothing broke. So then I just needed to connect them. So I decided that it was better to have it start on its side. I slid the side into place and then I was able to attach the bottom and go from there. For the next two attachments, I went ahead and rolled it onto its side again, just so I could be pointing down for my pilot holes and then attaching the fasteners. I just repeated the same process. I did make sure I measured to make sure they were even. I wanted to make sure that shelf was going to be nice and level. So yeah, just a few more fasteners and now the middle shelf is nice and secure. Next, I moved on to the top just to secure that top part and we got that done. And now the first box has been assembled. I flipped it over to make sure we're looking good and yeah, sweet. The last step for the boxes was to install a little screen mold on the faces. And this stuff is readily available at the big box store. It's made of pine. And then I just used three quarter inch nails to tack them onto the front. And so it just gives it a nice finished look for the end. And then that little bottom there is gonna hang over that carpet just a little in the closet, which works out great. So after I got all that done, we moved it to the floor and then I went ahead and filled all the holes. As you can see, I've got my family hanging out. My wife's getting ready to paint. For the holes, I used DAP Alex Plus Spackling, which I love. After all the holes were filled and smoothed out, we let it dry for a couple minutes. Then my awesome wife went ahead and rocked her painting skills. While I went to work assembling the next shelf box. You can see my family coming in and out, which is one of the reasons I love doing projects at home. So after it was all done, it was time to move the first box into position. I don't think I realized how big this shelf unit box was, but it actually worked out great. And another fun thing was my other daughter came in and helped us out moving this one in. And so this side that you see right here, it's gonna go against the wall so it didn't need to be painted. And so yeah, with a little bit of maneuvering, we were able to get it in. And it's going to slide right on that three quarter inch piece of plywood so it's level with the carpet. And then there it is. Boom. It's looking great. All I have to do is attach it to the wall. Next, I grabbed the top shelf to do a dry fit to make sure I have my measurements right. Everything's good. I had already attached the screen molding on the front and painted it. So now I just need to level it up. I grabbed a, a block there to put underneath. I did some nails temporarily. Then I drilled some pilot holes and now I'm doing longer two and a half inch screws to hold this guy into place. After we're done, we'll putty in those holes and paint them black. Then a little bit of adjusting and I grabbed a stool and then I was able to get my nail gun up there and pop some nails into that shelf just to hold it in place. After I attached the shelf, I was able to get a measurement for the side trim piece. So I didn't show you, but I ripped down some MDF. We painted it black and now I'm installing the trim board on each side. And then after that, we'll go in and touch up paint against the ceiling and the wall and all that you see there. I wanted to beef up my hanging rods and so I went ahead and cut out of the three quarter inch pieces of plywood I had some backer boards that I can attach the rods to. So after I cut them, I sanded them and then I needed to paint them all black. And so I was trying to save time by painting them all in bulk. And you know, as usual, when you go to try to save time, oh my, <laughs> So yeah, luckily, aside from getting a little black paint on my pants, which is no big deal, it worked out great. So while I let those dry, I went ahead and busted out the track saw to cut the last pieces for the shelf boxes, the adjustable shelves. So I ran the length and the width of them, and then I just went down the line and cut them to the right length. Now I needed to cut them a little bit shorter than the width of the box so that they would be able to slide in and out. After that, my boards were dry, and so now I'm able to attach the clothes rods to these beefier three quarter inch pieces of plywood so that there's just a little bit more strength when I attach them to the wall and the cabinet box. These closet rods are working great. I'll link those below in the show notes as well. I love that there's a tab on the top there that's an additional support, which is part of the reason I wanted to use these three quarter inch pieces of blocking. While I finished up the rods, my wife started prepping the shelves for paint and then she knocked out paint. After that, I went ahead and attached the screen mold to the front of each shelf as well. And so once that was done, we filled the holes, we painted the fronts, and then after that, we were ready to bring them in the house and install them. 
First, I installed all of the clothes hanger rods and they went in great. As you can see there, they're stacking. So one on top of the other. And then you can see a few bins that I've got in place kind of ready to go as I adjust the shelves here in a second. And then this is the other side. They're in there nice and secure. And yeah, the clothes are gonna be awesome. And yeah, that's the other shelf unit there ready to go. And man, we are looking good. To hold all the adjustable shelves in place, I used five millimeter nickel plated shelf pins and they work perfectly in those holes. So what's fun is we got to configure this the way we wanted. And so I slid in my shelves in the exact heights that I want them. And then if we want to change it, we can totally do that later. And so once I got all the shelves in the right spot, it was just a matter of adding all the bins. And so the first bin at the bottom on my side is an Ikea bin for a laundry hamper. And then we found these other awesome bins that fit the shelf perfectly for the smaller items. And so, yeah, we just slid them into place and then it was time to move into the closet for the first time. And there you have it, our mini closet that we have now maximized to its fullest. And I'm telling you, after using it for about a week now, I am so thankful I took the time to make this closet efficient and maximize the space and just make it our own. It has been so awesome, especially for a space that you use all the time, right? So, hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.